Hey everybody, welcome to K1 Agenda, episode 119. Today is August 12th, 2022. Um, my weekly um, diary for myself and um, posterity of what I'm doing in the future and um, um, what I'm doing right now. And um, it's been um, it's been a cool journey, a fun journey, but a busy journey. Um, Sometimes just trying to keep myself hyped up to do this, and now I'm back to eating healthy again. I did take a break in the summer to just enjoy, eat, and I was eating, eating a lot of food. So now I'm back to my uh, eating healthy, and um, just looking forward to um, a long, trying to have a long life, longevity, and do more things and um, of some of the things I want to do for music and uh, some of my aspirations for the future. Um, first off, I like to say, uh, what I've been doing is, um, I've been writing, visualizing new concepts and music, uh, uh, to start in the fall. And when I say start in the fall, that's when I will get back in the studio and work on some new music for 2023 and beyond. Um, yeah, you know, when you're not working in the studio, you know, you kind of get ideas. You have to get away from it sometimes. And then I have ideas and visualize some of the things that I want to do. So um, I'm in here right now. I've got a few things I got to do, some office work and some emailing and stuff. And I'm um, um, still working on getting some um, things done with um, booking. And um, also I um, uh, still have some uh, editing to do for my uh, Optic Nerve Live shows for visuals. But on that note, remember, just released uh, two weeks ago was PBX 35. The Unidentifiable Beings EP with um, myself, K1, and DJ Mako from Detroit in Effect. It was released. It's doing quite well. 
I'm very happy with anything that I put on my label. I'm very happy with because it wasn't just uh, just because I'm doing it. It's with people that I I have been doing collaborations with, and plus it's something that I put my money towards, all my money towards. So it's something I believe in and something I love. And certain people that I work with, man, just give me joy to work with them. And DJ Mako is one of those guys. So. Pick this up. It's still available. Day one, day one, this will be uh, day one, day one. the second to the last release for 2022. So, uh, people, please remember. <laughs> uh, check him out also. Mako will be, uh, I think he's going to be playing uh, Spain. I'm not sure. I don't have his dates right in front of me, but I know he goes out uh, next week. Safe travels to uh, DJ Mako. He has a lot of dates coming up. He's going to school y'all with uh, what it's like. DJs in Detroit, and he's one of them. So check him out, support him. Uh, I'll be out there soon. You will see me and see some videos uh, related to me DJing as well. So check that out. Also, I want to announce this: PBX 36 will be the last release of 2022. That comes out in the fall winter. That will be Optic Nerve Fragments EP on my label. A special minimal techno EP, uh, color um, color jacket. First um, album cover I've had solo with my face, my um, my vision on it. Um, I've done a lot of album covers and done a lot of pictures and all the concepts and stuff, for other stuff over there. But it's, it's nice to uh, get the optic nerve. I'd love to show it to you. I'm not going to do it. I actually have a cover here. I'm not going to do that. And the reasons why is because once you do that, then Two weeks later, somebody said, I already saw that it's already been out. That's just how the internet is and social media is. It's amazing. I have to wait till I have everything and want to release it and put it out so people can see it because you'll get so many people, they have no clue. They act like every time you put out a release, in two days, you're supposed to put another one out. I, I don't get it, but um, it's okay. But once again, PBX 36 will be the last release for Puzzle Box of this year. That's 2022. Get ready for it. It's the Fragments EP. That's PBX 36. Um, also, remember, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm working on it now. We'll have some info on a booking agent and booking info, which will be going up on social media very soon with dates and also stating when I will be in Europe and uh, doing some uh, a DJ tour. So keep your eyes on that. And um, anyone who's interested uh, for information for booking me for DJ sets, please email Puzzlebox at PuzzleboxRecords.com right now, and I will get someone to sort out your dates for you. Also, if you are indeed looking for a live show for Optic Nerve, you can contact Daniel at ConnectBookings.com, and he will sort you out with a date for my special Optic Nerve shows, which is something that's special. It has to be done correctly, or it will not be done at all. And, um, you know, um, I know I say this every week, but um, there will be some information, some definitive information coming up on all K1, Optic Nerve, Alien FM, all things related to booking shows, uh, me doing DJ sets, all of that. We're going to get a definitive answer and um, post some information very soon. So thank you for watching the K1 Agenda and get ready for the next segment. Thank you. Puzzle Boss Records. Um, Puzzle Boss Records is my label. It's been around since 1995. That's when it was started. Um, I just want to let people know if you want to buy any of the old music that we have, uh, some repressions and some new stuff that we're pressing, because we're going to be pressing old stuff, some more old repressions as well, please contact distribution at puzzleboxrecords.com and we will sort you out with a wholesale order. Um, first off, PBX34 which is um, K1 Meets Marty Bonds. That's the Cosmic Flight EP, the latest release. Pick that up. It's been doing very well. It's on a lot of DJs lists, a lot of DJs lists and stuff, and top 10 lists. So I'm very proud of that. That track of Marty's, man, uh, To Fly, is, is awesome. So please pick that up. Also, PBX TR3, Optic Nerve Trilogy Wave. That's from the uh, Trilogy Wave um, 3... Um, 
uh, EP set. This is wave three. It's back in stock and it's directly from us now. You can buy it directly from us. It was originally um, only being distributed by uh, Rubber Dub Records out of Glasgow, but now we have it back and we're exclu exclusively distributing it ourselves. And you got to get that track. The track on there is called The Gateway. It's a very unique optic nerve track I did back in the 90s. Also, pick up PBXC 230. That's the Alien FM double pack. Uh, original double pack called the original broadcast. It's repressed and back in stock. Pick that up. Also, pick up PBX 32 Stargazing EP K1 featuring the awesome Doppler effect. Pick that up. It's on color vinyl as well. Uh, limited edition color vinyl. Also, pick up PBX 3 Face Your Fate with the great writings of Black Tony. And it's also an acapella on here, so pick that up. Also, pick up PBX 8.5 Electropathics EP, repressing in stock now. That features the track Detroit Parties Rock Like This. Also, pick up PBX 4, the Automaton EP, for, with the tracks um, Technos, on my mind, Technos on My Mind, Nemesis, and Oscillator. Also, pick up Modular World K1 EP. This is my K1 um, Electro Funk more minimalized pick that up it's called modular world and that's pbx 29 also pick up the third release for um alien fm which is called monochromatic images featuring the vocals from kayla mcknight black tony and k1 pick that up also pick up pbx 31 voice modulation um from the album mad scientist aux 88 presents the mad scientist pick that up uh, we will be put, putting out more uh, EPs from um, my releases with uh, AUX88 from that Mad Scientist album. Um, this was a great track uh, done by Tommy Hamilton. Also, PBX33, Strand Meets Optic Nerve. We have a few of those left, so pick those up. It did quite well, but we do have a few more left, and we want to uh, we want to uh, get those out. So thank you. And once again, if you have any questions and you'd like to uh, talk to us about getting these records in your uh, record store and you want to uh, get it wholesale, please hit up distribution at puzzleboxrecords.com. Thank you. Hey, what's up, everybody? I just want to let you know that now the Optic Nerve t-shirts is available. Alien FM t-shirts is available. All my designs I did formerly when I was in AUX88, all the designs I did for Direct B Classics, all the Detroit designs I did, you can get them in t-shirts, hoodies, um, baseball shirts, coffee mugs, phone cases, um, laptop bags, everything is available. And you can order this and have pretty good, reasonable shipping because the t-shirts are printed in, in countries all around the world. So please take note, here's the, uh, the link and you can buy all the material and keep watching out because I have a sale twice a month where it's 35% off everything in the store. So thank you once again for supporting and look for those new designs coming. Thank you, K1 out. Question of the week. Question of the week. If you have any questions, please email puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com and I'll be happy to sort you out as always with the answer to the question. Uh, this this answer, uh, this question came in this morning and I looked at it and I was like, I'm going to put it right up. I didn't even go back to some of my old questions and I have a bunch of them. So I just went with the first one I saw this morning. Um, it says, what European techno scene from 1996 to 2000 were you inspired by what artists and your thoughts about that time? Oh, man, I was inspired by a lot of people in that time. Um, the Advent. Um, oh, well, who else? Um, another artist, a very a rare artist, David Rodemeyer from Amsterdam, who does electro. Way ahead of his time. I had a chance to do a remix for him. 
um, man, many artists. Uh, once again, um, uh, Anthony Rother. Uh, Rother was always doing stuff. I was always inspired by him. Uh, the group Duplex out of, um, that was another Amsterdam group, Dexter. Um, lots of groups um, from Amsterdam, man. Uh, I was always inspired by um, any beautiful sounds. A lot of stuff that was coming off the D1 label in Ireland. A lot of those groups, um, uh, Delzen Records, uh, New World Aquarium. That was another group that really inspired me. And I, what I really liked about that time uh, from 1996 to, to 2000 was uh, it was an era of when I started realizing like um, polish, you know, polishing your your um, your your brand or polishing like just, you know, publicity photos. Um, that's when you wanted, you were in a lot of magazines, you wanted to get in magazines, you know, polishing stuff. And I learned that from Europe and a lot of these groups, man, they always had the greatest logos and great um, mysterious looking pictures for publicity. And, you know, that's when I, I started uh, really kind of stepping up my game and, and looking at that. I always loved um, just what, the, uh, what what Europe was doing with uh, graphics, graphics and uh, artwork and stuff. But um, another another uh, one that I liked um, was uh, there was a label at the time called uh, Clear, which was ran by uh, Claire. Um, I like Chatterbox Records was another one on uh, it. Did, did a lot of stuff on um, it was, it was, oh, Matthew Herbert. That's what I was trying to think of, Matthew Herbert. I love Matthew Herbert stuff, man. It was just, oh, man. And not to mention, you know, Kirk DiGiorgio was always one of my favorites, always doing incredible work, incredible remixes. But also, on that note, if you have any more questions, please email puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com. I hope I answered your question because it was a spur of the moment. And I like to do everything spur of the moment on my thoughts and how I feel. So I can give you a truthful answer uh, straight from the heart. But once again, any more questions, please email us. Thank you. Old pick, um, old video. This one is very, um, I had to think about this and I ran across this. <coughs> As you see, I'm sitting in, in my studio now. It's not a lot of lights on. I just got the, the regular white lights on. But these are pictures of before me and my wife got our new home. And I had time because uh, just to give you a little story about it. I mean, we know our, um, our, um, our daughter was uh, about to go to uh, college and everything. We got all that straightened out. Then we decided to you know, put away and save and get things together for a new home. And we, we finally did. And, and I had, that gave me years of time to uh, plan what I wanted my studio to look like. So um, I want to um, just show you, um, as, and, as the, everybody who really knows me knows that I write down everything. I, I like to, I, I have an engineering background. So I like to, you know, I'm, I'm very good with writing notes, blueprints, that type of thing. So I had an idea. And here's the first uh pictures of well uh, the plan that I had for making my studio and here it is um this was um what my plan was how I wanted to make it whatever house we decided to get we just had to have a, a big basement and I that was what I asked for I wanted for me like my wife had that I wanted her to have everything she wanted but I just wanted to have a huge basement so I can make it just the way I wanted to and this this is also again the plans of what I came up with and not only did I uh, come up with the plans, but um, I had an old friend, um, um, if anyone recognizes, knows the group Frequency, which I was in, uh, my very first record was on Metroplex, which is Juan Atkins label, and I was uh, also doing music with Jesse Anderson, who is now known as Jess Beats. Um, he's, he builds and stuff, so I, I went to him, I contacted him, we got in contact again, and uh, I asked him to do some work for me at the studio. Uh, well, for my studio, because <clears throat> I had I had worked with drywall before. I did a lot of stuff before. Had studios where I built stuff before. Had lofts and stuff. But um, I wanted to really make it polished and everything. But make a long story short, he came in and um, we uh, came up with um, came up with a price and everything. And um, it didn't really work out. So he ended up doing like about eighty percent of the drywall, and he did a little bit, a few of the lights and stuff. Um, and it didn't work out, and um, I just still want to say want to say thank you because he did follow my vision, 
and um, it was nice hooking up with him. And this is what uh, came up with. But I finished the rest of the whole studio myself and made it completely exactly the way I wanted to. Here, here are more pictures. You see pictures pre before um, did any work. Lots of stuff before we did any work. And then here's a, uh, as we're going along, gliding along and getting stuff done. I also helped with doing some of the stuff, but I had to finish it up. I had to finish up the, the drywall. A lot of stuff was finished, uh, finished putting in insulation, doing the rest of the lighting. Um, and I also had a company come in to do my flooring. That was the only thing. Everything else was done by me. And my brother-in-law came in. Um, Sean Hurst, he came in and did some, um, helped me with the USBs, putting the, um, in the wall, and he did some, a, a little bit of electrical work, so I appreciate that. He came in like a trooper, man, right off the back. After he got off work, uh, a few days helped me do that, and I had my plans on where I wanted them, and I'm telling you, this is, um, uh, my, my dream studio. This is what I've always wanted. I'm glad it's just the way I want it, and it, it was, it was a lot of fun doing it. It actually came out even better than I could have imagined. And I wanted to make it where it was comfortable, but it's also sort of like a museum of showing what I've done and also being able to sit down and work and just go from synth to synth and, 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 and be able to see the sequences and the music from far away. Here are, uh, here's once again, some more pictures. And also I'll show you pictures of the final, a uh, final of, uh, just a few things of final. Here's, uh, the final display case, uh, that, uh, was made. Um, that was one of my ideas. Um, my only regret was I wish I could have made it completely longer or made two of them, but I ended up making just one along the wall, which there wasn't a wall there, put the wall up and the door. And, um, here's, um, just one picture uh, of the final product. Um, yeah, this was, this was, this was something that didn't take that long. It didn't take a year. I think it took me about, once we moved in, it took about three months but I was working every day, about 10 hours a day, got it done. And most of the stuff, if you see on all, all the stuff that's packed up and stuff, I already had pre-bought everything. Uh, the desk, all the stuff that I wanted from certain things from Ikea, different ideas I came up with, buying the arms, buying the legs, the wheels, all that type of stuff. I already had it. I had my chairs packed up about two years ago. I, beforehand, I'd already had chairs. I just had them in a box before we decided to find a place. But I'm very happy with what I came up with. And um, thanks for sharing, you know, in this story because it was it's it's truly like a uh, it's a blessing. Every time I come into my studio and I look, I was like, wow, I, I I was able to do what my vision was and my dream was after all those years, you know having studios and stuff and finally able to make exactly what I wanted because I'm a big sci-fi nerd. I wanted to make it look more like a spaceship and, you know, very spacey because that's the type of music that I make. And um, I'm happy with it. And I, I thank you all for uh, people send me messages all the time. Your studio is incredible. I've actually had people tell me, where did you get that background from? They don't even realize that it's actually real, you know, so that's a great compliment. And, um, you know, um, the real good friends or whatever people, man, they, they never make me feel like I'm bragging because I don't try to brag about it. I'm just, I'm just proud. I did a great job, and it's, um, it's only a few certain people who have actually even been here before, and uh, I don't have a lot of people come around my studio and everything. But my family is always welcome. Come in, even when I'm recording. You know, my my, my daughter comes over, and she'll just come right through the door, and that's the way it's supposed to be. This is her house too. Um, she doesn't live here anymore, but it's her. So it's like my nephews, they come over, they come hang out, they come in, you know, play some keyboards, whatever, and we hang out. So thank you everybody for all your support and all the beautiful things that you said about my studio. Thanks again. Thoughts of the week. Um, of course, I want to keep this vibe going. Thoughts of the week is studios. And the reason when I say studios, it just made me, I thought about this when I, gra I gathered all the pictures for the old pic picture uh, X segment. And what I want to say is, it's not about what you have or how much you have in the studio. 
It's what you do with it. And it speaks for itself. I mean, you know, there's some people who have tons and tons of, I have a lot of keyboards, a lot of synths and, you know, um, big monitors and all that. Man, you can have all that. You can have all that and it doesn't mean anything. The music, it still has to do music on with using the computers and it's what you do with it. I know people who have just, who work out of just their laptops and that's all they have, man. And they have virtual instruments. Great. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't have this and you don't have a real studio and you can't do this. Don't let anybody tell you that. It's what you do with the music that you have. The machines don't make the music. You put the music into the machines. And whatever you're using, be it software, uh, VST instruments, whatever, man, I tell everybody, whatever you work on or whatever you use, use it to the hill. Because the more you use it, the better you're going to get. But once again, stating this, studios, it's not what you have or how much you have, it's what you do with it. And trust and believe, I've, uh, I have I remember when I first started, I had my number one keyboard I had a Casio CZ101 and a Juno 106 and one drum machine. I worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it. That's what I used. And I created a lot of music with just that when I started off. So, you know, in order to go and do other things, I chose to have, you know, a more bigger studio as I uh, as years went by. But I've been um, to different people's places and I know people, who, I mean, they use, you know, just a laptop and a controller, man. And make great music. So do what you do the way you do. And don't let nobody else try to switch you or sway you from doing it. Thank you. See you in the next segment. My thoughts of the week. Shout outs. Once again, as always, I always say every week, um, I my brother's name is Mark Tucker, Mark Antonio Tucker. He will be 58 this year and um, we're looking for him. So anyone out there, if you know any uh, whereabouts or you know of know of him or work with him or whatever, um, give me an email at puzzlebox at puzzleboxrecords.com so we can uh catch up with my brother. I really want my brother to catch up and see my parents, man, because uh, we've had a lot of things happen over the years, man, that he probably don't even know about, and he needs to be back with the family. And I don't care for as long as it takes. He, I will put this in every week's video. Love you, bro. I uh, definitely want you to uh, contact us or anyone who knows him, con contact us. Thank you. Um, on that note, I want to um, send a special shout-out to... Uh, my man, I haven't talked to him in a while, um, Max Durant. Max Durant is one half of Fusion, which is a group that me and him uh, created when um, I spent time with him in uh, Italy and hung out and we did some uh, we did some releases. But uh, we do have the new Fusion is done, which that will be coming in 2023. Max did some amazing uh, work on this and amazing mixes. So get ready for Fusion. Here's a picture of us uh, back in the day when we played... Um, Oh, oh, what festival was that? Uh, well, we, I know we went Athens, Greece, Sync Festival in Athens, Greece, and um, this was like a little publicity picture for a magazine and stuff. But Max, look forward to seeing you, man. I probably will see you or get in contact with you before, um, before the new year because I'll be over in Berlin. I'm sure I'll probably play Tresor and I'll contact you and we hook up. But he's been busy uh, doing a lot of DJ tours, and I hope that we can hook up. On that note, I want to say I will be calling my moms and pops today. Love you guys. Um, thank you for all the support you've given me. Um, I mean, pushing me to say, hey, if you want to quit your job and this is what you believe in, in 1999, do it. We stand by you. We, we see what you can do and we see what you have done. So do it. So how many people going? How many people's parents going to say that, man? They've been with me. Um, biggest fans. I mean, they got so much paraphernalia. Uh, all the old shirts and all that stuff, as you can see in some of the pictures I show you, and they've been down forever for it. All the groups that I've been in and all the people that I work with, they they support them as well, and they've always been supportive. So love you guys, and we'll be calling you today. On that note, I know what I've done, I know what I will be doing, and I thank you all for your support of the K1 Agenda. See you next week on episode 
120. Thank you. And I just wanted to say, everyone, please hit that subscribe button for YouTube and please subscribe to my page. Um, I really have enjoyed all the support I've been getting, but hey, like this and subscribe to this page. Keep Tucker K1. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you.